I'm Mark Jones. I want to give you a brief introduction to my upcoming three-part presentation, Fast and Slow Reasoning in Physiotherapy Practice. Physiotherapists can be noisy in their clinical reasoning. Noise refers to unwanted variability in our clinical judgments. If a student or a practicing physiotherapist was examining the same patient with another student or therapist, do you think they should reach the same or similar diagnosis? Should they be consistent in their ability to recognize physical, environmental, and psychosocial factors that might be contributing to the patient's presentation? Should they be consistent in their ability to recognize safety issues and know when further investigation is required? Should they have consistency, at least in their broad management decisions? And should they be consistent in their ability to advise their patients about their prognosis? This is what we will achieve, I think, through my three-part presentation. And clinical reasoning is important because Although some of the problems we encounter as physiotherapists can be quite simple and not require a lot of problem solving, many of the problems, as you well know, are complex multifactorial presentations that cannot be resolved and managed successfully just by following an existing protocol. We know that expert physiotherapists do have advanced clinical reasoning, and they use that to manage familiar problems efficiently and cost effectively. But most importantly, and I think what we'll, we'll cover in this three-part presentation, is that an expert physiotherapist with good clinical reasoning can manage the unfamiliar complex presentations by adaptively reasoning. And they do that by having a very thorough reasoning process. Our current knowledge in health generally and physiotherapy specifically is just simply incomplete. And our clinical practice guidelines, as important as they are, alone are insufficient to tailor our management to the individual patient. Without skilled clinical reasoning, our physiotherapy judgments are noisy. So what you'll take away from this three-part clinical reasoning presentation. Well, of course, everyone thinks and analyzes and we all reason but it doesn't mean we all do this well and all of us can improve. It's difficult to improve anything if you don't first understand it well. And that's the main thing you'll get through this, this course, this three-part presentation, is a very thorough understanding of contemporary clinical reasoning. Some of the takeaways, some of the things we'll focus on is the scope of our clinical reasoning, Yes, it's about diagnosis and management, but it's also much more than that. And we'll cover other aspects and other focus of our reasoning. We'll go through the analytical processes, the inductive and deductive reasoning that we use and the pitfalls of some of that reasoning. We'll talk about essential categories of clinical reasoning judgment. And I'll be getting you to have discussions amongst yourselves about what categories do you make judgments on. We'll particularly spend some time on psychosocial focused reasoning, because in my own experience, many therapists are stronger in their physical diagnostic reasoning and not so strong in the psychosocial focused reasoning. And we'll cover what constitutes good reasoning. We'll go through the elements of critical thinking and good reasoning. We'll talk about common errors of reasoning and importantly, strategies to minimize errors. So how's it gonna help your practice? Well, if you reflect on the things that we'll be covering on the scope and the process of your own current reasoning, this is gonna facilitate improvement in your reasoning, your clarity of reasoning, the accuracy of your reasoning, how precise you are, your ability to judge relevance and information, the depth and breadth and the logic of your current reasoning. If you reflect on the current categories of clinical judgment, which we will be doing, it's gonna facilitate accountability, accountability to yourself, to supervisors, and also to patients. And it'll promote consistency. 
information sought to inform the judgments, we'll go through that. We'll talk about what information we think is important for different clinical reasoning judgments. And then also important is what criteria do you use to make your judgments? Can you even articulate that? So we'll, we'll do some discussions and comparisons on essential criteria for different clinical reasoning judgments. And lastly, whenever you, you reflect on things like common errors, you become more alert to errors that you might also be making. And if you think about strategies to minimize errors, that's going to be something you can take back to your practice and minimize your own errors and therefore improve your clinical reasoning. I look forward to meeting you on my three-part presentation. Thank you.